Welcome back to the Racial Draft Podcast. I am your host, Michael Ford, joined by a fun little group of uh, independent folks. Um, Until you've been prepping that all weekend. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, we're not blowing up. We're not blowing up various landmarks. um, But, you know, we may give a rousing speech at the end. And we may welcome you to Earth. Uh, (laughs) But, um, yes, we're joined by, from the Black delegation, Randy. Randy, what's up? Uh, nothing much. I, I don't know what all these people are setting off fireworks for. My, my Independence Day was a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, we may never be independent again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're also joined by the champion, Carlos. What's up? Uh, you know, this is a weird Independence Day. Uh, I feel like the first Independence Day, you know, was kind of centered or more around tea. And I feel like we should just drink tea. <laughs> of, I never understood fireworks. It's like, no, 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 just drink some tea. Well, we are going to give you all of the racial draft tea this week. <laughs> 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 but uh, if this is your first episode, uh, I apologize. We're going to do what we do every week. And that is change the complexion of a comic book universe, one draft pick at a time via the racial draft. But before we do that, we're also going to crack some jokes. Um, we're And we're going to talk about nerd news, of which we didn't have a big, big nerd news week. Um, you know, it's, we don't know if this is the final season of the America uh, series, um, but but you know, it's it's it's, it's a lot of a lot of uh, series are reaching their end game, and um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of rapid fire plot developments happen. Um, people take people take really uh, quickly to get from point A to point B. Uh, if rep- inexplicably, uh, people turn heel. Um, you know, once trusted, <laughs> once trusted institutions uh, fall victim to chicanery i so, I, I for one am not loving all these <laughs> twists and turns like yeah who who brought in new showrunners <laughs> 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 but um you know we are also reaching the end of our season hopefully uh we've got more seasons of the racial draft to come uh as we reach our uh season four end game and um you know it, it was a fun week it was a fun week. We, we will definitely get into some of the some of the Benioff and Weiss type uh, picks that might have uh, happened in the, in the past week. But uh, let's talk about some news first. And um, WandaVision, well, not WandaVision, sorry, uh, Agatha all along, the Agatha Harkness uh, spinoff is getting a, a filming start date. So that's, that's, that's happening. It's really happening. And uh, yeah, January 2023 will be when principal photography will start on the Agatha Harkness series. Uh, how are you guys feeling about uh, the actual, actual, factual uh, Agatha Harkness television series? I, I like it will never not amuse me like on just the most profound level that we are getting a thing that is focused <laughs> on Agatha Harkness of all people. And it's like, you know, <clears throat> that's not even like throwing shade to the character at all. But I just feel like we're we're kind of, uh, we're, we're getting fed and, and it feels good. Yeah, if someone would have told me like five years ago that uh, one, Agatha Harkness was going to be uh, featured in live action mm-hmm. and two, that she was going to not only be featured in live action, but get a television series, I would be like, uh, what happened to Marvel? Did they go out of business? Did they, <laughs> was, there, was there some sort of, some, some sort of lawsuit <laughs> that led to them losing all their characters? Yeah, what I would have been like, I would have been like, oh, so Agatha was technically a Spider-Man character? Is that, is that what we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, right, it's not, it's, yeah, Sony. Sony got the rights to. 
and it's like you know uh some some in, insane cat like antonio sabato jr is agatha harkness and you're like what what are they doing over there? <laughs> oh man yeah we're we're looking at an asian centered uh martial arts uh agatha series you know she, starring she, she, steven seagal and yeah there won't be any witchcraft involved um, <laughs> in her old days when she was a, a spy for, for <laughs> like oh okay yep exactly agents of harkness <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm i'm really interested to see where this is what this is what the, what this is is the best way to say that like <laughs> what story are they telling here and you know it would be very unlike them to tell a story that doesn't connect to the the greater mm-hmm. saga and at play so like what is this and how does it factor so in? I could so I could definitely see them at least having a little bit of the Wanda still trapped in a sitcom thing. Um, but this time, like she kind of knows she's in a sitcom. You mean Agatha still trapped sorry, in sorry. a sitcom? Sorry, yeah. yeah, sorry. Agatha's still trapped in a sitcom, but, but this time she knows she's in a sitcom, and then maybe it cuts back and forth between like her trying to get out of the sitcom and then going and ex- and telling stories you know from her past i kind of have a feeling that it's going to be like the end of multiverse of madness cleared agatha of her of the spell and so she's just going to wake up oh okay i just kind of think i was like and i hope you weren't too tied to the implications of the end of one division because <laughs> we're just throwing it all out <laughs> That would I mean, it could be very morbidly hilarious. I, I mean, the yeah, first yeah. needle drop is just like it was all a dream, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was thinking, wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, little little bone thugs in in your area, um, but um, and then and then of, yeah, and then she could de- therefore just go off on her own merry adventures, unencumbered by uh the results of that of wandavision i can see that too yeah but but either way there's got to be some a musical element because everyone everyone loves themselves and agatha all along oh, and um okay you know so the jingle maybe they'll remix it you know i don't i mean that's got to almost be her theme music right like 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 some in the sort score of or, some or, some sort of orchestral bum 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 yeah, I, yeah, I hope so. Probably, probably. <laughs> yeah, I can so. totally see something too, where it's like, you know, first episode, she's living in a stupor, and Wong, who is like the magical, he's the Nick Fury of this phase. Like, <laughs> Wong just shows up and be like, Agatha, snap out of it, and be like, and you know, we find out they know each other because magic is a small community or something, and <laughs> we need you for X mission of something. <laughs> Well, going by going by recent events, it, it won't be Wong. It'll be America Chavez. Yeah. Um, <laughs> be like, there's an Agatha in this universe too, <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't speak Spanish either. What the hell? <laughs> you, you know, like like uh, this might be the the story that gets us to a more grown up Wiccan. Maybe I, don't I know. hope this I might hope. be this might be I don't know. Oh, that that'd be a be a kind of cool move i mean i was i was hoping that would be like what what you know uh what multiverse of madness did but better late than never Mm. yeah i mean so far every you know every disney plus series has featured a young superhero Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. you know who better who better than uh weekend and or speed right yeah so Ralph maybe. Boner coming back. Boner's back. Boner's back, baby. <laughs> it's Boner time. <laughs> I I oh. sincerely hope we never hear that name again. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. I don't I don't care. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, P- Peter Evans, Evan Peters, whatever his name is. I don't want to see him again, honestly. Unless they're like, <laughs> actually, psych. He's like 
now under it has a new name witness protection something like because that is just gonna frustrate me so much i mean we already we already cracked the case that his his name's gonna be simon williams guys i, I don't know i thought and, we talked see, about this and see that's that's only like marginally better because i really didn't want him to be simon like i was okay so so part of me was like of the mindset that yes okay fine i can kind of you know get used to it i can deal but ideally if i had my way about it he is not who i would cast for song oh no for sure i mean I, i'm just going by you know if they do want to use him again that would be that the, would the be absolutely a, would be a glow up yes yeah and you know of course he's still uh, you know he's still want uh, not wong um uh he still woos witnesses witness that yeah. The, the 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 um the plot point that is still hanging out there uh-huh. yeah that's true uh, and he's an aerospace engineer <laughs> and mephisto <laughs> one of those things was an actual plot point and those other things are just things we made up <laughs> oh man but yeah, so 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 that was news. That was Agatha. Um, additionally, I mean, we may as well talk about it. Um, the Sony of it all. Uh, we talked last week about Madam Web, uh, the uh, the Webicide Squad. I don't know what we want to call it. <laughs> you know, uh, Spidey's ain't Sony's angels. Um, you know, the the female centered movie of where we're the only person that has been identified is the titular Madam Web, but very young, very young compared to the comic counterpart. So uh, what we know is that there are a lot did of women. They, sorry, did, did they ever confirm that uh, that Dakota Johnson was playing um, Cassandra? No, no, no. Nope, they just said she was just... playing Madam Web. Right. It's Madam Web. Okay. First name Madam, last name Web. <laughs> Okay, that that is that is uh, marginally comforting. Okay, proceed. Yeah. <laughs> so we have theorized uh, both on the show and off mm-hmm. the show that uh, that uh, this is going to be Sony's attempt at a uh, a second a second bite at the No Way Home slash Spider Verse Apple. I believe that Cassandra Webb, Madam Webb, is going to assemble female spider heroes from throughout the multiverse to fight against the threat and that will allow uh the the various actresses that have been cast thus far to be playing different versions of of spider woman or spider woman ish named characters and the madam web is the person that brings them all together that's my theory I'm on board with, I think, I mean, I think I'm on, I'm on record as being on board with that as of last week, right? We're like, and she'll be Gwen Stacy, and she'll be Aranya, and she'll be like, just down the list. Yeah. Yeah, the one thing, I mean, I think a lot of people had been uh, honing in on the idea of Sydney Sweeney playing Black Cat, but I yeah. actually think that, no, I think she's going to probably be playing Jessica Drew, um, if only to put her in the Jessica Drew uh, comic accurate uh, outfit. And you know, I and... I, it, I don't necessarily I don't necessarily doubt that, but I feel like if they went the multiverse route in the first like outing, that feels like a mistake. <laughs> hopefully, I'm not the you know. Hopefully, I'm not the only one who feels that way. Hopefully, also the people at Sony feel that way as well. Yeah. But, well, you know, normally my the retort that I would give you is, Randy, this is Sony. But news, <laughs> but news was. Uh, I I, I want to make sure that we got full confirmation on this, or uh-huh. whether it was still a rumor. Um, but it's looking like Kevin. F- oh, Production Weekly and Small Screen are reporting or did report that Kevin Feige will be producing this movie. Right. So. This changes things a little bit, you know. I mean, normally uh, they can just pull out pull out any kind of shenanigans out, right? Um, and it's and we just go Sony. <laughs> 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 but um, 
if Kevin Feige's involved, maybe he's going to try to rein this in and 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 keep it from well, going well, completely off the rails. Yeah, but I guess my point there is just like you know, I, I feel as if, I mean, whether or not they will remains to be seen. But I think mm-hmm. that a route they could go is that you know we could possibly have. Um, you know, Julia Carpenter as, as, you know, becoming Madam Webb, but, you know, having, like, I don't know, I guess it's just like, you, you kind of see them assemble, but not necessarily for like a Spider-Verse thing. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, you, yes, you them, but the like, reason, the reason that I think the reason that I think I could, I, I the reason I'm leaning so heavily towards the multiverse um, mm. argument is because it allows <laughs> the M- MCU to be involved without fully being involved, right? Yeah. It, it allows them, it allows a, a mechanism by which uh, Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew could be in the MCU, but in order, you know, it's the Faustian bargain, in order to get a Jessica Drew in the MCU, Feige's gonna have to play nice with these other characters and, and use uh, the MCU's character to legitimize uh, characters that probably don't need legitimizing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I you know, but and, my... and, you know, and w- one more thing. And, you know, multiverse is, is such a big, big buzzword. And Spider-Man No Way Home made so much money. You know, it's like three Spider-Man was $1.8 billion. What would six spider women get? You know, <laughs> even taking account the fact that they only get paid uh 80 cents on the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's so horrible. <laughs> yeah, but so that's that's how I'm thinking that the math is mathing there. You know, that if you, you throw in a bunch of spider women and by making them from different universes, then mm-hmm. the continuity, they don't have to worry about what came before and explain. Right, you right. could have you could have a spider Gwen that's grown up. You know, you can have a a black, a female Miles Morales. What, what were we calling her? Miley Morales? Um, <laughs> Miley Morales. Millie, Millie yeah. Morales. Millie was what I went with. And you went with Miley. That's right. Yeah. Look, uh, the, the the people are the people are the people are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't, we can't. Uh, yeah, you can't even change one vowel vowel sound. You know? <laughs> like Miley Morales. You'd be like, is she is she related to Miles Morales? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can you know. So you, you get you get a, a, a Rania, uh where she just speaks Spanish the whole movie, just so we you know we know that. <laughs> just so we're sure that she's <laughs> she comes from a universe <laughs> <laughs> where the, the where, where all of the universe. fears of the Republican Party have come to fruition. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be like she she's. Go ahead, Randy. Um, no, I was about to say, she comes from the universe where America Chavez should have come from. <laughs> I was going to say, she's going to be like the, um, like in Ocean's Eleven, there's the one, the Chinese guy from the Chinese circus who just only speaks Mandarin. And then, except for like one, he's like, where the fuck you guys been? Like, <laughs> that's that's going to be her. She's going to only speak <laughs> Spanish. And then one time just be like, you know, shut the fuck up. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> So that be, be prepared for that gag. Um, it's interesting that they haven't cast, um, you know, because if we would have seen any Korean women, we would have like, oh, mm. okay, this is definitely what they're doing. Yeah. Okay, got it. But um, that's, that is that's also the, the one, that's the final casting. The final. But casting. but Silk is also the one that was supposedly being developed at Amazon. So it is, but maybe but, that, that's that's but, a big old supposedly. Right. Yeah, but but they could still. But that's the beauty of this. It could still be the same silk. It could, you know, that who yeah. has not yet been cast. Sure. You know, and look, this is going to sound horrible, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> um, silk is a character that people know about, but they don't know a lot about. Sure. Um, and I mean, to, to and they're going to be able. Comics go, go. Haven't, that's what I said. To be fair, the comics haven't really given us a whole lot to know. Right, but but the but what I'm saying is that people like the mainstream they know that there is a an Asian uh-huh. spider character named Silk, uh-huh. and that's probably about as much as they know. Yeah, right. um, 
Like so much so that I was convinced that a few years back they were going to cast Aquafina to play her, and and everyone was just going to be like, "Yep, yep, that that works." Um, <laughs> but um, you know, that ship has sailed somewhat. Um, although it is Sony, so we never know. Um, that silk will actually only speak in um in black vernacular. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, like. She, she won't be speaking no Korean at all. Like Millie Morales looks at them and like, wait, but what? But then why am I here? What's happening? Yeah, it, it'll definitely be another Tropic Thunder situation. It's like, what do you mean, you people? She won't take the mask off, so so we'll just have to like assume the whole time that she's black. But everyone will be like, is she? I thought she was Cindy Moon. No, okay. Um, What's gonna be really but, funny is when the villain in this movie is like. They're up against the clock because if they don't get this movie out, then they, Sony loses the rights to Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only reason this is happening, right? Like, we have to have a, pro- a, a project, a project in production at all times. <laughs> Morbius two apparently not happening. So, <laughs> no. But if I may be craven um, <laughs> oh. right now, I would say that um, that that Sony is is looking at. All the popularity of uh, you know Korean dramas and Squid Game and and sh- and things of that nature, and they're gonna make they're gonna make Cindy Moon not Korean American, but Korean Korean, um, and they're gonna try to cast uh, old girl from Squid Game as as Cindy Moon. I that intrigues me. That intrigues me <laughs> if if. Does she? She doesn't speak English, correct? Like she's again. This is so. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that intrigues me if she doesn't speak English because it's like, whoa, that's a flex. What are we doing? Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah you are really right. you are daring people to come to a, ironically to come to a comic book movie and read. That's going to be rough. <laughs> Read while looking at pictures. How will the comic book fans even know how to do that? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I mean, you know, we like to make we like to make predictions here, predictions here on the show, and uh, that's 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 my that's my prediction that despite the canon, despite the canon, they will uh, cast a Korean Korean uh, to play Cindy Moon, uh, much to the consternation of our friend Ron, and um, you know. Unsurprisingly, uh, certain people that we know will will completely defend it and see no problems with it. Um, <laughs> and that's we'll, a little inside jokey joke, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's fine. It's fine. There is you don't one. even. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go, ahead. Go. Keep going. You don't care. You don't even care. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is one man in this cast, apparently. Uh, at what? least on, on, on IMDb, there's there's one guy who's listed as cast, but obviously with the, as if with the rest of these characters or these actors, no character name. But uh, a man named Tahar Rahim is I'm on the look IMDb page. Yeah, he also you shows up on Google. But um, it's, you said Tahara or Tahar? Tahar, T A H A R. And then Rahim, R-A-H-I-M, is listed as being in this movie. That's one man so far, but I haven't heard an announcement of that, so I don't know where that came from. French actor of Algerian descent. Uh-oh. Shout out to the, shout out to the uh, Swana Mena delegation. You know, mm-hmm. got to keep their scouting eye open. I wonder. I wonder they, what. They, yeah, they, they do have him on, uh, on deadline. Yeah, so I'm looking at it. Maybe yeah. he's gonna play Moreland. Maybe the Morelands are gonna be uh, are gonna be uh, Algerian. Hmm. Sony had no comment, <laughs> according to Deadline. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good-looking dude. Yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, he he's a vampire uh, of of spiders. He, you know, I could see it. Yeah, I could see that. Yep. I think but at yes. one point in the, in our in our group chat we once talked about that being what you would do with like a, a before that there was an announcement of across the Spider Verse we were like oh that would be what you could do with the Spider Verse sequel mm-hmm. true yeah 
So, I mean, we still need to see what they're planning with the Spider-Verse. Who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll use animated versions of these characters to promote, uh, you know, well, they'll have Spider-Verse promote this movie through uh, animated versions of all their various multiversal characters. Because we are getting a Jessica Drew uh, in that movie, and she's going to be Black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's more Sony shenanigans. Madam Web, stay tuned. Uh, speaking of shenanigans involving Sony, uh, Ghostbusters, they, they, they had a hit. They, they, they did that thing last year. Um, you know, I don't remember how much the first movie made, about, oh, 200 million worldwide. Not bad. Not bad for a pandemic. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. And uh, the new one, the sequel, will be happening in December 2023. Are, are, is any, are any of you hyped for, for the new Ghostbusters? After, I, I Afterlife? Haven't, I haven't seen Afterlife yet. Oh, okay. I actually, I haven't either. The, um, the reviews of it didn't make me want to rush out and go see it. It was kind of like, if you like nostalgia, and I was like, okay, I, I get what <laughs> I see what we're doing. Okay, I can wait for this. Well, this is going to be a perfect transition from uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife to the next uh, product or project, and that would be Stranger Things. Yes, uh, the show that made people want to make another Ghostbusters movie um, set in the 80s? No, in the present day, but feeling like the 80s. Um, yeah, Stranger Things broke uh, Nielsen's streaming records. Wow. Um, you know, and this is even before uh, dropping two two hour uh, episodes and calling it and calling it a season finale. Uh, I used to, I, well, I grew up hearing that was a movie. <laughs> back, in, back in my days, that was a movie. It's like four seasons and a movie. <laughs> they gave us, they gave us four, they gave us three and a half seasons and two movies. Um, good on them. I mean, I, I watched it; it was great. Um, I got got songs in my head from from the eighties, but you know that's that's what they do. They're, I heard there's like Spotify playlists where if you're ever trapped in the upside down. What are the songs that they'll have that they'll play for you to get you out? Right, right. Yeah. I haven't. I'm like way behind. I'm, I've only seen uh, maybe two episodes of this season, the season, the last season. Okay. Not the not the last batch right. of episodes, like the whole last season. Uh, and it was like, oh, they're gonna. This is like real scary. Oh, like they're, they're yeah. doing it this this time. <laughs> um, so like it was like, okay, I can't watch this. Like while my kids are up, I'll have to wait because they're scaredy cats. So. I understand. I, yeah, I haven't gotten around to it. I was on the edge of my seats watching that finale. I'm like, oh my God, no, no, no. And then it just cut to black while playing Journey. Uh, yeah, it was it was tough. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't stop believing. Um, but yeah, so Stranger Things is winning. Um, and you know, Netflix really needs a hit right now. So so they're happy. 72, oh, sorry, 7.2 billion minutes uh, from seven episodes of season four. So uh, I really just think like you just said, Netflix needs a hit right now. But like they don't, they don't need a hit. They just need to release things weekly. <laughs> like they, they had hits. They've had so many hits, but everyone sees them. And like they come and go, and then they're just like, okay, what's the next thing? And they come and go. Like, imagine if Stranger Things was releasing weekly. Like, we would. This would be the whole summer. Yeah, but I think that works for. I mean, you know, I think we've talked about this before. Maybe not for a while. I think with, with when it comes to discovery, I think that the binge model works because someone will watch something, they'll be bored, they'll watch like 10 episodes in a row or five and five or whatever of something new that just got served up to them. To mm -hmm. they were, and, then they'll, and then they'll tell people about it and then it'll turn into a big thing. It's only after the, the phenomenon happens because it's all available to people that in subsequent seasons, I think that 
something like a weekly release or chunk releases like you know can can work you know we saw it with ozark we saw it with ozark um we're seeing it with with stranger things but but it's still kind of tricky because depending on the week that they launch it something you know in a week something from marvel or something from hbo max can come out and just come kind of dominate the discourse i mean sure but like I agree with you that like the first season of Stranger Things was a complete phenomenon and it was bingeable and everyone watched it. The second season of Stranger Things, once it was once it was a known commodity and people were waiting for the release, should have been weekly. Even if it was two episodes a week or something, mm -hmm. like it just should have been. It, it's it it it's math. It just sustains the subscriptions longer because people are going to wait till the end of a season. And so with this, you know, this. Uh, Breaking it up into half seasons is like, it's it's a half measure. But like the next season of um, Squid Game, it it's ridiculous that they won't release that weekly, that it's gonna be just one big drop. Because yeah, but the, people but the, will be the on the edge reason, of their seats. Right, but the only reason that we think that, and this is, well, um, now, now I'm really gonna get into it. The, like, viewer expectations have changed. Um, you know, a show, like House of Cards, let's say, kind of falls apart plot-wise if you're if you if you're not just going from episode to episode. You know, like like when you've got time to mull, we see it with the Marvel shows, we see it with these other shows that when when you actually get to marinate on a show for a week, people are more critical of them. People are going to theorize and they're going to be disappointed. If, they, if things don't live up because they have now invested months in a show sure. rather than, you know, a show that was just like a, a shot of cocaine, you know, like you're <laughs> like you're it, it's just you just can't you can't stop watching. You're just, you know, watching it and you want to see what happens next. And maybe you stop and then, you know, your friend has watched like one more episode than you and you're like, don't tell me what happens. Or, you know, but it's like a totally different emotion when the when when you know that it's all there and you're trying to get to the end of it versus everyone's hanging on the next word and everyone's waiting for the next thing to come out and when and if it doesn't hit the way that it should there's a whole seven days of people being like well that was whack what the hell you know <laughs> like i thought the next game was going to be you know uh i thought this person was going to die in in the episode but it was the other person that i don't care about you know, like, like with with Netflix, they have the advantage of if you don't like this episode or if it's not really hitting you, just go. All you need to do is like it enough to keep, to, you know, to hit play. And it's actually going to autoplay. So, you know, if you fall asleep, if you fall asleep, then you may get three episodes ahead and then you're like, what the hell? You know, I only watch two of these episodes. Why am I on episode six? Oh, and so many, so many shows are like in my algorithm now, like on all of the platforms. Like, I have never seen that Amy Schumer <laughs> show. I don't know what you're talking about. Why am I in episode four of this? I've never yeah. seen it. And that still counts to the Netflix numbers, right. you know. <laughs> so, like, but but you're right. They don't they don't need a hit in the way that I, I made it sound. Like they're not they're not CW, right? Like they're not like going up going out of business. But um, the perception is that they, they have a Stranger Things, but they need, you know, three more Stranger Things in order to justify the share price. Hmm. Uh, we are joined by, from the Great White North, former white delegate Sean, our FCL guru. Hey, Sean. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad, not too bad. We we're we we're still in the nerd news portion of the show. I think that was our last uh, nerd news story. So okay, I came well, in at the tail end. What was that one about? Uh, we were just talking, talking about, about TV shows. Yeah, we were talking about Stranger Things. Um, oh, okay. And you know, and and how it it broke it broke records with seven point two billion uh, minutes viewed for its first seven episodes. That's amazing. But yeah. I think well deserved because like this last season of Stranger Things, I watched the nine the nine hours in I think a day and a half, and then the moment the the part two dropped, I just stayed up all night and watched it. I was like See? an addict. 
this is the, this is this is what Netflix is banking on. That crack. <laughs> That's true. Between that That's and Umbrella Academy crack. right now, it's like Netflix. You're owning. You're earning your bank right now. You see. And that's and that's the and that's the business model, you know. Like, I, I don't I don't hate it. It's just that they need they have to they have to create enough product uh, to keep to to satisfy people's insatiable appetites. But like, like they're like, struggling with that right now because right now like they're they're hemorrhaging money from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. They always like, have been. They've always been losing money. Like this is. Yeah, it's true. This is not. This has been yeah. their business model, but. The thing is, okay, so like, remember, remember in Mario Brothers, you'd get to those levels where you have to, the the screen is moving, and you're jumping from platform to platform, and the platforms are falling, and you just got to keep, and the thing is, and and don't look back. The thing is that if you were a child who had any sense of like, like patience, you would realize that if you hung back, you can see where you're supposed to jump. But because we were all idiots, we're all at the edge of the right edge of the screen, (laughs) just waiting for the next thing. And like, maybe we'll make it, maybe we won't. That's Netflix. Netflix is like, and take this, and now this, and maybe watch this. And like, oh, you didn't like that one, and the platform falls, you know? Like, whereas, like, Disney will will say, Disney Plus will be like, uh, we've got this Marvel show, it's going for six weeks because that's a month and a half. So we've got you for two months of subscription. And by the way, right as that one's ending, here's this Star Wars show that's going to go for a month yeah. and a half. And as that one's ending, here comes another you know, Marvel show because for a month yeah. and a half. And they've always got you. If you're a, if you're but, a fan of fan things, yes. they've always got you. Yeah, but they Disney's also have that, that they've got the Disney Uh-oh. can just be like Star Wars, Marvel, Star Wars, Marvel. Netflix has got to be like, we got to build this shit from the ground up. So here's a Stranger exactly. Things and uh, uh, something else hopefully becomes the next one. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Disney never has to worry about that. They're like, we're fucking Disney. We put yeah. our name on something. You go and see it. It's like you've been you've been hooked up to this crack for your, your entire <laughs> life. <laughs> like this isn't the new crack. <laughs> this is the same crack. Guess what? We're, you're now crack to your children too. You're welcome. Right. You're you're introducing your children to crack. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix is is out there with the new product. They're like it's not stepped on. I'm telling you, it's it's the new. It's the new. <laughs> So that's that's what it is. And Disney, you know, eventually Disney's like price of the bricks going up. <laughs> but um, always. And, 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 and but you're right, though, be, be, the other piece of it. And this is what like people who are in the content business, like, well, we're not in the content business. We're more like in the content hobby. But people in the content business love the fact that shows come out weekly because they can talk about them weekly. They can put out blog posts about them weekly and they can, you know, they can keep fan interest going for those seven days between, between drops. Yeah. It's not just a 24 seven news cycle. It's a 24 seven entertainment cycle. Yeah. Yeah. But with Netflix, you know, you've got to sort of build up and then create content around the binge. And it's it's a lot different than creating content. Well, I mean, that's, weekly that's drop. but that that's sort of why they're doing like um, these big name shows, right? Like Avatar: The Last Airbender. They're trying to do live action version of that. Um, One Piece. They're trying to do like I mean, they're trying to do some that are like really well known names. True, and you know, and maybe this is where we're seeing the creative limitations of what they're when they when they try to develop their own IP versus uh-huh. just acquiring someone else's. I mean, that's just, I, my, my limited contribution to this, <laughs> this uh, segment is just like, of all the things that you possibly could have tried to develop into live action, <laughs> you choose some of the like most outlandish, physically dynamic sort of material that's like, we, we, we don't have money for that CGI. We can't do that. So I was just thinking, like off that, like we're gonna get into comics. Uh, what's that Mark Millar guy doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> was that your entry into comics? I mean, like even even if you want to like focus on him, he had a comic that he just recently, well, now not recently, but a couple years ago, he released um, Prodigy, which is yeah. like 
so it's a really interesting comic and it's like you know the cgi yes but it's not super like to the extreme of freaking one piece like that's mm-hmm. a lot that's that's a huge hill to, <laughs> to scale and, and now i do think that they were developing prodigy at one point but, right were you know, past tense and yeah it's, yeah now Millar Millar was Jupiter um Jupiter, Jupiter ascending. ascending. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So grand opening, grand closing there. Um <laughs> is that what that was called? Jupiter ascending, or was that the is that a different thing? That's I what I always can that's, that's what I always get confused of. The that's one Jupiter ascending Loki thing. Jupiter legacy yeah. is Jupiter's the legacy. Oh, there we okay. go. Jup- yeah, Jupiter wasn't that the um the, the Wachowski siblings is that Jupiter sending? <laughs> oh, with the with with the with the Channing with the, Tatum and with the and Mew, man. Mila Kunis, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, I, I think I said brothers. <laughs> I meant the sisters. Yeah, um, yeah. All that is to say that uh, w- Stranger Things, you guys should you guys should watch it. It's good. Um, Squid Game and season I'm, two. I'm, I'm sitting back. I'm feeling so bad because I have not seen a single second of Stranger Things, and everybody's like, "You're missing out. It's so wonderful." I'm like, <sighs> "I mean, you're missing out. It's wonderful." But, right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that that first season is really, really special, and I was not a big fan of seasons two or three, but they're they're Me too. fine. Yeah, they're fine. Season four, like the one or two episodes that I've seen, it's like this is good like this is really okay good. they're back for like, me I, season I four is like, like the prom sorry sorry i haven't watched like, season, season four, four so pays off the promise of season one. you know oh, like season awesome. one is brilliant and you're like this could be something amazing season four is like yo the amazing has arrived <laughs> yes <laughs> sorry it's 100 so long 100 <laughs> i agree um but this is not a stranger things podcast as much as uh i might want it to be but we are into our racial draft business. That's right, into our racial draft business. Uh, the complexion of the comic universe is being changed. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, I'll run down the picks for this week. For those of you who want the, 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 the fast rundowns, we start with Craglin from the Latinx delegation. We continue to the Penguin from the Jewish delegation, Bane from the East Southeast Asian delegation, Iska the Unbeaten from the Black delegation, Harvey Dent, Two-Face for the multiracial delegation, Dante Pertu's Inferno for the Native American delegation, uh, Siegfried from the South Asian delegation, Booster Gold from the White delegation, Dawn Star from the Polynesian delegation, and Ra's al Ghul for the Swana Mena delegation. Let's get into it. We will start with Craglin. You talked about Craglin at the end of last week, but talk about it again for the people who are just tuning in, Carlos. Craglin's going to be in a movie. <laughs> no, I talked about it last week about how uh, Craglin kind of is. He, my car had just been fixed by two randos at AutoZone, two Mexican guys uh, in a neighbor, in a Mexican neighborhood in, in Chicago, and I was like. And then I saw a trailer for Thor and I was like, Craglin is basically this. He's basically like the, the greaser of the universe who <laughs> will fix your, you know, switch out your alternator of your, uh, of your Milano whenever you need it. <laughs> and he's in a movie and it's coming out soon. Fair enough. There's this guy, this guy who's up by like 200 points is out there chasing 10 <laughs> bonus points. Well, the people with one day left, are sitting at 55.5% approval rating for Craglin. So <laughs> just so you know, it's okay. chasing, those, chasing those 10 bonus points didn't get those 20 bonus points, you know? Yeah, that's that's fine. <laughs> I, I didn't get 20 bonus points for Ava Quintero, so... <laughs> yeah. So and she's a, not going to give me 10 bonus points for a movie. So Well, that was a travesty. That was a yeah. travesty. Um, also, not, also falling uh, terribly short is, uh, we talked about this last week, 43% approval rating for Everett Thomas, a.k.a. Sink, uh, by the Polynesian delegation. Yeah, the streets were not feeling Polynesian Sink. Nope, not feeling Polynesian Sink. And uh, I understand. 
You know what the streets were feeling though? White Baron Zemo. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Shout out to the white delegation for playing to the playing to the fans, playing to the crowd, giving the people what they want, which is a white Nazi adjacent. Uh, Things villain. to the mob, as it were. <laughs> Is, is is that what the people were on? playing to the clan? Playing to the <laughs> <laughs> so twenty points with a one hundred percent approval rating for Helmet Baron Zemo and the Whites. I mean, it, it, it's only right, guys. It's only right. He fe- it feels like he's where he needs to be. <laughs> yeah, there really isn't. Like no one else should should be making a claim there. I was actually thinking about this while you guys were talking because there's there in punk rock history there was a black woman that was basically like adopted by the clan, and she was taught to hate everything about herself, and she found no. escape through punk music. And she's a okay. really interesting figure. It's like you could do something like that with Helmet Zemo, you know. I mean, we could, but we're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the only direction you could really go with it. I think. I, I, okay, I'll say this. I, I believe that I believe that the Latinx delegation could draft an Argentinian ex-Nazi. I think that might be a thing. So <laughs> I think that's. I think it's possible. I could fit him in. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, we've seen Zemo dance. That's that's not. No, that's not where it, that's that's, <laughs> that's not what's up. There, there's no feeling <laughs> there at all. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, um. But like I said before, the Jewish delegation they got in. Um. You know, taking a little bit of a hint from from Harley Quinn, I suppose, with uh Oswald Cobblepot, which is definitely sounds like a waspy name if we're being honest. But you know, I mean, it's not it's not uncommon for a Jewish family to take on a a white sounding name in order to fit into high society. So so yeah, the penguin, Jewish penguin. Uh he was Jewish in the Harley Quinn cartoon. Um, you know, um, obviously there's some unfortunate stereotypes about noses that I'm gonna leave alone. Um, yeah. but like, yeah, the penguin, sure. Jewish penguin. In He's in a, the in the Gotham series. There's a there's a there's an episode. I only watched like four or five episodes, so it's got to be in one of those where they you you meet Penguin's mother, mm-hmm. and she talks about how their name was Kubelput, like from and they were like and they were like Austrian or something Austrian mm-hmm. immigrants, and then it got anglicized or he anglicized it maybe when he came when he was mm-hmm. coming up. So like there you know there's that's why I, I had said in the chat that I thought. That he might have been a Jewish immigrant because I remember. The actor, that I don't name. think the actor is though, Robin Lord Taylor. Um, right, but but maybe the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but I I mean I know there's been different interpretations of the penguin um, in in comics, um, and a lot of them have tied into the Cobblepots being kind of like old old Gotham money. Um, yeah, but you know that doesn't that doesn't necessarily stop them from being a Jewish family that, um, you know, is, is just part of high society. And maybe, you know, maybe it's, it's a, it's a, a sore spot. Maybe it's a sore spot for, for the penguin that uh, he feels not quite like he, he's, 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 uh, he, he, like his family was in, in the inner circle. And, and that's why it was so easy for him to take on a life of crime. Sean, from an FCO perspective, Where's where's uh, Penguin sitting as far as the villain rankings? Okay, so uh, Cobblepot, uh, I think he's sitting around 13 right now. He's not in the top 10, but he has crazy appearances. I think he has the most appearances out of any villain right now at like 21 oh, out wow. of 25 weeks. So oh, 21 wow. appearances in 25 weeks. <laughs> but he doesn't that do anything. Of, like, That's Cobblepot's that because problem. because of like the Iceberg do. Lounge or whatever? Yes, he shows up a lot. Uh I get him business as often as I can because he very rarely shoots anybody with that umbrella of his. And he's not, he got a bunch of magic points recently because he got pulled into monkey prints yep. and he turned into oh. a super beast. Oh, that was wow, kind of cool. Well, that's cool. I think that's the most he's ever gotten in a week. And that was like seven points. 
All right. Well, obviously we know uh, he had that appearance in the Batman uh, film and he's got a show coming. For... And he's one of the main villains in Zardarsky's upcoming run. On oh, Batman. OK. So, you know, he's um, who knows if, if in the remaining five weeks that uh, of this season, uh, whether that'll pay off. But still a good solid pick, especially this late into the draft. The fact that Penguin was still out on the board is, is uh, you know, just goes to show there's still some characters that can be, that can be scooped up at this time. I would say too that um, on the on the Gotham series, his mother was played by Carol Kane, who is Jewish, like quite oh, Jewish, okay. and her whole family is Jewish. And um, well, I mean, if Oswald's mother is Jewish, then he's Jewish, right? <laughs> so right. that's yeah. that's settled. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, yeah. So I do think that they that like that was the intention was that he was like a like an Austrian immigrant, but of Jewish descent in the and the in, Gotham, in the world of in the of world Gotham. of Gotham. Yeah. OK, so that's another that's, that's another uh, depiction of of Penguin as Jewish. OK. So, uh, yeah, but the, so that's the Penguin um, moving on. Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, yes. The East Southeast it's staying in the realm of Batman. The uh, East Southeast Asian delegation, they, they made that, that, that pick that a lot of people were fan casting that's somewhat controversial, but a lot of people are still into it. And that would be Bane, Filipino Bane, Dave Batista Bane. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I know, like I said, I know it's somewhat controversial, but I'm feeling it. it, it, it I, just... I, I still want the thing to happen. Like, I can't, I can't shake it. <laughs> like if if we get a a Latino Bane, that's great. But if they're like, nah, actually we prefer <laughs> Dave Bautista. I'm I'm not mad at it. I mean, Filipino still... Filipinos are the Latinos of Asia. Let's be real. Yeah, like, yeah it really is. It really is. <laughs> We've said this before. You know, they they have Spanish last names. Many of them. We have a lot of the same uh, words in our foods and whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. So, uh, so yeah, hundred percent approval rating right now, but there's still uh, a little over two days left. Let me so, go a bit. Yeah. See. So, Bane, and uh, shout out to our gal Charlene, giving the hell's yeah on behalf of uh, of Asian of Filipino people specifically. My apologies. <laughs> So he's, you know, not only is he very strong and incredibly smart, but like he can break dance. <laughs> <laughs> he's been to nursing school. Like this is this is all good stuff. <laughs> this is all great. <laughs> My wife had her graduation party uh, last week, and her coworkers came, and it was like. My my family was like, wait, are all these people her coworkers? Like, yes, it's three tables of Filipino women. Like, yes, it's these are her coworkers from the hospital, and it literally was. It was so many, uh, and there's like it was a potluck. So many Filipino people, uh, Filipino dishes there. It was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Uh, falling short of the ninety percent threshold this week is the South Asian delegation. Uh, they, you know, they they wanted to stay in the realm of maybe some some she-hulk points i guess with the uh south asian titania um but 86 percent of the people approved ah. not 90 so that's the Bummer. letdown that Damn. is the letdown also let down and we talked about this last week 67 percent approval rating for native american plastic man um, again plastic man uh does not believe in accountability Therefore, he should probably be a white guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just, just, he, he's he's got a lot of shady behavior, a lot of a lot of uh, things that would not fly nowadays in uh, in Pe Plastic Man's past. That is that is true. It mm -hmm. is very much giving Jim Carrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can't you know? Can't be mad at the people here. Speaking of kudos, we got to give kudos to Randy. You know, I got, I'll be honest, there's a lot of times where, you know, you'll make a pick and I'll be like, you're, you went, you went outside the box there. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. But uh, this week, it's because the unbeaten, one of the newer characters introduced is the X Men mythos. 
one of Apocalypse's family members and in-laws and children and such. She's black, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all black. We we got to be honest here. I, they, I had to. Uh, I had to uh, break my my no black rule because <laughs> I mean, like, I just I really appreciated uh, X Men Red, and I'm just you know I, I had to do it. Now, Sean, I, you, are I you want, up no, on I the X Men Red first? I want to speak yeah. to X Men Red first. Man, Roberto DeCasto being the first person in like almost all of history to uh-huh. beat Iska. Yeah. I was like, I fucking, I love you so much. Like, uh, sorry, X-Men Red is the best book that Marvel might be putting out right now. So good. I'm behind. I'm behind on the book. Sorry. Um... <laughs> Don't get canceled. Al Ewing, this is his third go at trying to tell an X-Men in space story. Let him tell a story. Everybody buy it. No, I bought it. I'm subscribed. I'm subscribed to it. I just, I'm just behind as far as reading it. It's Um, it's a beautiful thing when you get the chapter. Well, well, to be fair, this is this is like when when you you spoiled me on Mina Dawan, um, (laughs) taking the evil turn right when I right when I was like (laughs) about to read that comic. Like it it was like the week of. I was almost onto the issue where (laughs) she got there. Like who? But the difference is that book came out like two years ago. <laughs> I, I, what can I say? But it, it's fair. So, so Iska is the one speeding, apparently, um, but still 100% approval rating as of now. With, with 19 votes, people really came out for Iska. Um, and you family chained her. So you got her sister, uh, Genesis. Uh-huh. You also got her niece and nephew, uh, Unfortunate in in the in the phrasing, I have to admit. Uh, black death, black war, <laughs> black pestilence, and black. Uh, what was the third? Who's the fourth? Famine. Uh, black famine. Yeah, all of these things are problematic to say the least. Um, but but the people approve of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just very unfortunate. Hundred percent approval rating for Black Death. <laughs> once, once again, appealing to the mobs, the clans. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, of course I. Pro- oh wait, racial draft. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so you might you might have some 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 points coming to you, but some some tears, some some, some tears coming. As well. <laughs> yeah, so, but but yeah, shout out to shout out to Randy making. That was cool. Uh, yep. I like. Um, speaking of black adjacency, Iris West, drafted by the multiracial delegation, ninety-two percent approval rating for multiracial Iris West. So that's going to get you some points. Congratulations. And uh, they family chained. Uh, her daughter, Nora West Allen, also multiracial on the Sh- Flash TV series, 100% approval rated. Question. What's multiracial? Like, obviously, the Latinx division is winning, right? Like, you're just killing it, I'm assuming. <laughs> just based off past history. But where's everybody else kind of sitting? Um, yeah, you know what? I can, I can do, I can do a, a, a quick recap right now of uh where everyone stands um i'm i'm not gonna do the thing that i normally do where i i you know say like who's in 10th place and go down and you know just read off the scores so yeah. the swana mana delegation they have uh 515 total points but uh you know like you know we do fcl points and then we have bonus points as well mm-hmm. so 515 total points uh 233 fcl points um the Polynesian delegation has 483 total points and 251, uh, no, 261 uh, FCL points. The white delegation has 774 total points and 625 FCL points. The South Asian delegation has 873 total points and 517 FCL points. The Native American delegation has 749 total points 
and 396 um, FCL points. The multiracial delegation has 884 uh, total points and 547 FCL points. The black delegation has 950 total points and 616 FCL points. The East Southeast Asian delegation has 929 total points and 517 FCL points. The Jewish delegation has 663 total points and 510 FCL points. Say the Jewish one again. Uh, the six, first. Six, 663 total and 510 FCL. Okay. And, uh, and the Latinx delegation with 1,290 total points and 940 FCL points. So yeah, they're uh, they are they are running away. I believe. Let me make sure they have more FCL points than any other delegation has total points. If so, I'm following correctly, it's the top three are Latin, Southeast Asian, and then the Black. Uh, yeah. Because we got a thousand nine hundred, and I think the black was the highest of the eight hundreds, which also includes the multiracial and South Asian. So it's pretty tight. It's a pretty tight race. All these like bonus points and stuff. You're doing a really good job of just handicapping Carlos. Yeah, the bonus points are <laughs> killing me. Killing Wait me. a second. Wait a second, my guy. You, <laughs> you, you're you can get bonus points whenever you want because you like like oh yeah, poor baby Carlos. He's only <laughs> you, you have. Know, you have 350 bonus points, sir. World's <laughs> smallest violin. I I have no but sense. he's not like undefeatable. Like in the last couple of seasons when but it was like really? stuff, yeah. he was just nobody came close. Well, look, nobody came close. Well, look, look, look like, the, like, real, kind of the real the real problem is gonna be next season because I don't know if you heard uh Sean. Uh next season, uh every team's gonna get a Batman. Um every team is going. We're just gonna we're gonna break con we're break uh, uh, multiverse rules and every delegation will have a Batman to play with, um, so that's the equalizer. But like, what kind of Batman are they all having? Bruce Wayne? Or are they all, all getting? Yeah, we're, we're they're all, all getting. Bruce Wayne. They're all getting Bruce Wayne, but they get to like create a backstory and create like you know um, fan art around their version of Batman. But so everybody gets a Batman to start, and then everyone has to draft. Like you get a Batman, you get a Batman. Yeah, <laughs> you all get Batman. So the reason that's important is because uh, currently Batman has three hundred sixty-one points. Yeah, he's oh, actually. Yeah. Let me look at my yeah. more. AKA more points than I have him at four fifty-nine than, right now. Yeah, yeah, because I think you guys were from like the beginning of the year, and um, that's crazy. Three sixty-one. That's crazy. Oh, the yeah. thing is though that like. I also spent eleven hundred dollars on Batman, <laughs> so and the you season have, before that was eleven ninety nine. You, so. you just yeah, you, you just have to imagine that I would have spent eleven hundred dollars on another character who would have gotten me. I, I mean, eleven hundred dollars, eleven hundred dollars on yeah. Wolverine or. I and, uh, understand. I, I understand. I, not to brag or anything, but uh, despite how much you spent, you and I still keep on the. Uh, we're we're pretty close neck and neck. Like my my uh my rating has has fluctuated a bit, but I'm not as far behind as absolutely. You know. Yeah, the battle for week, second place. Season, Randy. Next week when Thor comes out, I will get. <laughs> let's see, I'll get All points for point. Thor, Star Lord, Nebula, Groot, Kraglin. Do I have any others? I think that might be it. I think that's it. I'll get bonus points for them that'll be a nice day when that comes out yeah. well i think i just r ran down the fact that uh that randy's charting for potentially 500 percent approval ratings mm -hmm. so that's that's oh, nice. i know 
Yeah, that's yeah. that's a hundred points. <laughs> don't, don't, not that is not a re, that is not a, a, a reason for you to go in there and downvote. <laughs> <laughs> I I vote. Listen, I upvoted all of those picks because I was like, "Yep, those are black people." <laughs> <laughs> And then, as we mentioned, the people do approve of all of those tragedies befalling Black people. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was weird voting for Black famine and Black <laughs> war. <laughs> like, where's Black excellence? You know? Nope. Not, not, <laughs> not, in, not in Iraqo, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and Krakoa, um, and Krakoa's for the culture. In Iraqo, they keep it real. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but speaking of Black adjacency, uh, Harvey Dent, or you know, as I like to call him, two race. Ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Multiracial delegation. Um, we we've talked about this before. I think that I think it's just I think it's just too perfect. You know, it, it really is. Like this is this is someone who has struggled for his whole life, being in two different worlds and trying to be you know live up to. Uh, respectable respectability politics and then all of a sudden you know he gets the acid thrown to his face and he just decides you know i'm black now i mean (laughs) (laughs) i i feel like instead of like falling into the acid or something like that i think he's like he's he's at a biochemical company and he falls into the thing and like it, it recombines his DNA to remove the black side of his, of his heritage. So like one side is just totally white now. No, but no, you see, you're mixing up with the Joker. He doesn't fall into a vat of chemicals. He gets he acid. Like, he gets acid thrown into his face by a client in court, in open court. I mean, a client. Oh, the, oh the, so the, so during the, cross so examination. The, so the dark side of him is the burnt up side. Oh, okay, that's, that's not <laughs> problematic at all. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I really like the um, the way the animated series did it. Like, it wasn't a courtroom scene. It was it was an explosion of chemicals where he gets oh, okay. like it's a uh, Rupert Thorne. I think Rupert Thorne's men are are going to extort him because they find his psychiatric files, like from his mm-hmm. from his uh, psychiatrist. And um, yeah, and like he he ends up like shot down or something like on a catwalk over some flammables and it it explodes and blows off half i'm I'm not gonna lie my mind was my mind was thinking about like the 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 dark knight where he just like falls over into the oh with the the oil on his face yeah the dark knight he's (laughs) he's held hostage and he burns half his face Mm -hmm. you know because he you know uh, that was the joker was responsible for it but he doesn't fall into chemicals. That is very much the Joker's origin story. <laughs> <laughs> Only he is uh, stumbling, stumbling into power, um, which again. Imagine this as like a DC Black Label anthology book. Multiple creators from different cultures get to write a two-faced like anthology. But the only thing is you have to like, you have to have, the each side be a different ethnicity. That's <laughs> funny. That's the way it, but like, imagine what you could do with that. Not everybody has to do. Yeah, but like, you see that. I feel well, like that's a way. You could just tell whatever story you want. That's the premise, yeah, but though. but but the problem is that is like that. That's a, just a way to take shots at another race because it's just like <laughs> the good part of our race is is Indian and the bad part is Pakistani. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I think you. I think you, away, you the, the risk. Part. You run the risk of uh, mm-hmm. what if Miles Morales was Thor kind of stuff there? <laughs> if maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think it might. Perhaps. Yeah. But, but again, in the, re- in the hands of the multiracial delegation, uh, they can be as problematic as they want because they're multiracial. <laughs> like, I, I believe it was the, 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 the immortal words of, of a uh, Aubrey Graham who said that he might be light skinned? <laughs> Still a dark nigga. <laughs> and, and I feel like that's the spirit of uh, Harvey Dent. That's what we're looking for from uh, from 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 multiracial Harvey Dent. I would pay uh, twice we- the amount of admission if I knew that Harvey Dent said that in a movie. <laughs> I'd be like, here, I'm buying two tickets. You just, it's just worth it. It's just worth it. 
when when Barack Obama was an up and coming state senator in Illinois, my friends and I used to like see his face in the newspaper and be like, so he becomes two face, right? Like we're we're all in agreement because for us, like it was always just clear that animated series Harvey Dent was biracial. Like he just he didn't look like Bruce Wayne. He was drawn mm-hmm. a different way in a different style. Um, so, and as it turns out, it, it's actually kind of more consistent with like the way they drew Italian mobsters on that show. Um, but you know, it's, it's still- I feel like it's in the same realm of like when people thought that Lex Luthor was black. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the same animation style. It's just, just like the you know, it's just like just little 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 drop of melanin in the white character. <laughs> Yeah. It's also like they gave them lips, which not every yeah. character has, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, there, there were, yeah, it was, you know what, if, if it's not the way they drew Black people, it was definitely the way they drew Italians, <laughs> and that's still yes. racist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to talk about Cecilia, you know, Sicily mm-hmm. and their uh, tenuous connection to Africa. Right, right. But <laughs> 100% approval rating, though, for, for two race. Um Hundred percent approval for that pun. That pun alone. <laughs> That's 100%. a good pun. It's a good pun. Um, hundred percent approval rating for Black Rakoa. It's a hey. Randy's revenge. Correct. Randy's revenge. <laughs> Randy racking up the hundreds. Like we <laughs> we have we have talked our shit about Randy and his drafting strategy, but now is the time. For the last, the last laughs, Krakoa. The Krakoa who laughs. <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, I, I, I I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of sentimental about, uh, about Krakoa. Like, I, I, I hate that there was not really room to like draft on the main roster, but I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try to, you know, pay homage. Krakoa is one of the most iconic things I think you've added to this whole, like, the entire endeavor that is the racial draft. Well, you also got 100% approval rating for Black Araco, and I feel like that's even more correct. (laughs) Because Araco is about that life. (laughs) I mean, like, the fact of the matter is, from from my first first strategery, uh, behind drafting Krakoa was like, hey, they use all these gates to get around. That's got to count for power points, right? <laughs> and then it's like, actually, that that's the fun part, does it? <laughs> so, but <laughs> you know, still worth it. Yeah, I think that was the most creative Brian ever got. And like, no, and I was like, oh, well, why? He's like, well, because things that are normal don't score. So we're just going to make it a normal part of that culture. And I was like, (laughs) all right. You know what? You've you've got your reasoning. Uh, Good creative flex. I still think that uh, if not the Black delegation, the Native American or the Polynesian delegation could also uh, draft Krakoa and have it work. Yeah, definitely. I had my Krakoa backstory ready to go for three seasons now, but <laughs> <laughs> just can't get to that pesky island. I mean, you know, you had to you had to make that move for Craglin. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Krakoa was off the board when I took Craglin. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Was. he was. That was last week, right? Exactly. Um, but you know, with the good comes the bad. So you got your two one hundred percent approvals for. Krakoa and Araco, but you did not get uh, 100% approval. You got 66% approval for Vega Superior, uh, Black Krakoa the Third, and uh, Black Krakoa Sinister. Um, 66 for the first two, and 33 for Black Krakoa Sinister. Um, yeah, the, the first two were about that life. The third, <laughs> the last three were like, uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I I figured they probably wouldn't be anyway, just because they were like kind of uh, monstrified characters, <laughs> not really yeah. like you know you couldn't really artistically portray them in a way that was like, hey, actually they kind of you know it, I can kind of see it like no they they look like something yeah. man thing or something like that so yeah I figured as much plus their stories weren't exactly 
yeah. you know, as riveting as the other two. Exactly. Uh, the next pick, this one was interesting because I haven't seen this character in the books for a while. Uh, and that would be Dante, a.k.a. Inferno. Dante Partus, uh, a.k.a. Inferno. One of the uh, one of the Inhumans that, you know, might have might have made it. Um, but but he didn't. But he didn't. Um, he was in a couple of the Marvel Risings. I have no idea what he when he's last appeared. Sean, can you help us out on the FCL? It's tip? been years ago. Bad. It's been, I don't think he's shown up in a couple of years. Like, yeah, it's been years. I don't think so. Yeah. It's unfortunate he was an inhuman when it was like you do not want that attached to your to your name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll get the uh, maybe he'll get the the gin blow up. You know, get the gin glow up, and you know he'll be a gin human. Um, you know, and and he'll make us he'll make a return. Well, well. To be fair, to be fair, if anybody was going to get that glow up, I I think that it would make sense for uh, Dinesh Diol, aka Grid, who is actually like Indian. <laughs> He's actually South mm-hmm. Asian. So I feel like that you know. That, yeah, but, that but, but like I said, Dante was was getting. He was getting exposure. He was on. He, he was he getting was, you know, pushed arbitrarily because he was not interesting. But Aww. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. They were trying to give a fire-based Latino hero like some shine. Uh, I I laud their their uh, creativity to that end. How how original that. A Latino would be <laughs> hot blooded and would be fiery. <laughs> how, how creative! Yes, of course. <laughs> but I mean, it just it it was it was very much like they. I don't know. It, it, whatever. We're not going to get off into the Inhumans conversation. Forget it. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Well, currently, uh, the Native American delegation with Dante seventy one point four percent approval. There are still four days left. So if you want to approve, get that vote in, get that approval vote in. Maybe we can redeem him as Native American. Or not. <laughs> not going to see about that vote now. <laughs> Dude, Dante Pertuz is from a suburb of Chicago. He's from Des Plaines, Illinois. That's amazing. Do you know a lot about Des Plaines? Because I do not. Des Plaines is like, yeah, it's it's like one of those suburbs that's so close to Chicago that it's just Chicago. Like, you're like, oh, I'm in Des Plaines. What, what happened? Oh, okay. I already, I already somewhat disapproved. Never mind. <laughs> um, I apologize in advance for this joke that I'm about to make because <laughs> don't say Des Plaines. Look, boss. Des Plaines. Des Plaines. <laughs> nope. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't do Fantasy Island. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I was going to say you got some displaining to do. Uh... <laughs> 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 <sighs> Sorry, guys. It's a choose your own adventure. Like, which, which racist joke should you make? <laughs> <laughs> but it ends up at the same page. <laughs> uh, I mean, you you explained displains, and you know, it was just yeah, it was yes. it was right there. It was right. Yes, there. it was his desplanation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to the South Asian delegation, uh, you are as our FCL guru. Tell the people about Siegfried. Sean? Like Siegfried, like from Wonder Woman? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Wonder Woman got over Steve Trevor and started banging uh, <laughs> North God. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. Now, but here's And the now thing. they're like best buddies. It's really weird. Like Steve Trevor and Siegfried are like, it's them. Like Wonder Woman's avoiding both of them, so they're just like let's bond. <laughs> Eskimo brothers, clearly. Um, but here's the weird thing: like he's Norse, but he like definitely doesn't look like a white guy. Like he's brown. He's real brown. Yeah, he doesn't look Norse at all. 
No. So. I mean, frankly, I've always been of the mind that it's it's kind of fun to imagine that like the the deities are sort of separate from um you know like they're they're not necessarily creations of the the people mm -hmm. who worship them so like you know sure. they don't have to necessarily be a a uh, Heimdall is the whitest of them all it doesn't <laughs> have to be that not really I agree so so the South Asian delegation went ahead and and got them uh, Siegfried um, you know obviously extra bonus points for being a good looking man. Um, <laughs> Correct. I've seen I, I could not. I could not find art of him not looking hot. It was yeah. like very. It was, um, it was also lot. going back to Heimdall, though. The guy that is watching everybody and keeping credit of all the races before they make any moves. You don't want that guy to be white. That's some white as shit. <laughs> I mean, that that's fair, but at the same time, I feel like you 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 don't really say no to Idris Elba. Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like the idea of Heimdall is like the neighborhood watch for the entire universe. Like yeah. he sees it, he does nothing about it. But he but, but sees he, it. Right. He 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 sees it and he doesn't snitch. I think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see points him. points were made points were made I, I, I think i think i've been swayed i think i've been swayed <laughs> I, I i can see if he was on some like george zimmerman food like, oh well, what are you doing here like uh, why did you say something heimdall because i ain't no snitch frigga <laughs> frigga please <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're welcome for the episode. <laughs> and and title the episode already. <laughs> Riga, is you taking notes on a criminal fucking conspiracy? <laughs> oh man. Whew. Oh man, and from we go from that joke to white booster gold. White booster gold. Um on one hand, Booster Gold is absolutely a white guy because he stole some technology. He appropriated technology so that he could go to the past and, and pass himself off as a superhero. And even after people found out he did that, they were like, nah, it's good. You, you're, all, you're all good. You can, you can right. still play with us. Upward. <laughs> yeah. into superheroism. They're like, you are cool. you've broken so many laws. Uh, time, space, and larceny, but but you know you're white, so it's all you know, you're it's all forgiven. On the other hand, uh, Black Booster Gold in Legends of Tomorrow was cool as hell. It again, you don't say no to to Donald Faison. That's 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 the rules. And yeah. see, this is what this is one of Gordy's best picks, in my opinion, because he's like, <laughs> oh. Did you guys did you guys think you were gonna get him? No, he's ours. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Donald Faison's um, my ass. Yeah. This fan uh, cast must be Zach Braff. Like it just has to be. <laughs> <laughs> I continue to remain flummoxed at the fact that there is still with with only four picks to go. There is a very prominent white character that absolutely should be white that has still not been drafted by the white delegation uh with still four picks to go in the supplemental draft and it's it's amazing it's amazing that i don't know if i don't know if they're just you know resting on the laurels that nobody else wants this character but it's amazing to me that i think i know who it is finally <laughs> i think i got it i think i got it <laughs> but it's i'm shocked but we we shall, we shall see. We shall, we'll see how how it plays out. But currently, the people, probably led by Randy, are not feeling <laughs> white booster gold. Not feeling white booster gold. Seventy two point seven percent approval rating for white oh, booster. That's too bad. Hey, Grandpa, I need you to make me a Twitter account so I can log into it quickly and vote for something. <laughs> <laughs>
another character that fell short of the threshold. A little disappointing. Uh, Alec Holland, aka Swamp Thing, mm-hmm. by the mm-hmm. Southeast or the sorry, the East Southeast Asian delegation. Uh, Southeast Asian Swamp Thing only got 86% approval, but still going to get some art via Sh- Charlene in the next day or so. So they'll get their points that way, I suppose. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that not just Levi Kamel? No, Levi Kamel has already been drafted. He's um, South Asian. I know, he's but South I'm not Asian. Sure. yeah. No, but that's not, no. So, th- so th- there's, remember, there's the East, Southeast Asian delegation. That's like China, Taiwan, uh, Philippines, that part. And then there's South Asian, which is India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, right. you know, that like whatever. Yeah. Um, so Levi Kamel was drafted um, earlier by the South Asian delegation, defensive pick. But, uh, you know, white swamp thing was just sitting out there. And, um, you know, Asian delegation was like, yeah, we, we, we can have one. We'll take one. <laughs> Speaking of appropriation, you, you we're all familiar with the character of Dawnstar, yes? Yeah. Well, for the listeners who may not be, uh, I'm not, you guys are gonna help me out with like the names. So Legions of Superhero, Legion of Superheroes, uh, 31st century, there was apparently a planet that was um, were they abducted or were, or did they come? I think they were abducted, right, Randy? The, I uh, do not know. Um, yeah, the- so there was a, a, a nation of Native Americans who was taken to space and they uh, settled on a planet. And- yeah, they, it, it, it says here that they actually, um, that they settled it, that it was okay. not like, yeah. Yeah, but you know. History is written by the winners, so <laughs> right. <laughs> they may have colonized it. Yeah, I mean, th- yeah, that's that's basically <laughs> what they what they said. It was like it was, it was colonized, um, born on the planet Starhaven, a planet colonized by Amerinds from Earth. Um, and then, and then early in the colonization of that planet, the the colonists were bioengineered with wings and the ability to survive in space without oxygen or you know protection from the rigors of space. Yeah. So, I mean, we've talked before about how a lot of the stories for the Polynesian delegation uh, and the Native American delegation can can be somewhat interchangeable. So it's not a you know, it it doesn't really break the character to have the what's the name of the people again? The uh, hold on. This is because like I. Yeah, it it just says that they're. let me see. Dang it. Where did, I just saw it. My God, this computer is slow. I know the planet was called Starhaven, but I don't right. know. Right. I, I don't think it was. I don't think it says it here, spills it out. Um, but yeah, the, the people from Starhaven mm-hmm. can, can also be uh, people from, from the islands instead of, uh, you know, well, it, it says here the Amerinds, which I'm assuming is just like American slang, Indians. Or, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. According to Wikipedia, which is um Sacrosanct, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. It was it was it was yeah, given to us by by the gods. Um her people are the Anasazi Indians. Okay, yeah, that, that rings a bell. Um, which is a word that comes from Navajo. So there you go. Okay. Well, uh, no challenges thus far by the Native American delegation, Be the, you know, Polynesian delegation. Uh, so far, uh, so far, I think that 100% approval rating. But, See, you know, I, I, I should have known better than to check the DC wiki because they suck at updating things. They really do. Mm. Right? <laughs> oh, also, according to Wikipedia, many contemporary Pueblo peoples object to the use of the term Anasazi. So mm-hmm. they uh, often will use the term ancestral Pueblo peoples. So there you go. There we go. So we'll, we'll, hear, we'll hear back, hopefully, uh, from Toriano to see whether, whether he has uh, opinions about, about uh, Dark, not Dark Star, Dawn Star. 
Bronze Star. Yeah, I, I for one have zero objections to to Polynesian people finding their own planet and being like cosmic, like everybody else. I'm here for it. Got it. What I heard was he wanted all Polynesian people to leave the planet. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so tell him your ass. <laughs> When, as soon as you said it, Randy, I was like, and that's why they should have Silver Surfer. It makes so much sense. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that. I agree. That's that's definitely a character that needs to be targeted next next season. I, I know the Polynesian delegation has drafted Silver Surfer before. Mm -hmm. they, need to, they need to do it again. Um, I mean, the, the only reason why I would argue for, like, um, possibly South Asian, like, somewhere either east southeast asian or south asian um purely because the name of his planet zen la is like um it's, it's a combination of the word zen and shangri la which are both kind of like asian you know mm. concepts and stuff but other than that yes again i i am here for for polynesians uh expanding their horizons as it were yeah i feel you um but again, that, that's a season five concern because in yeah. season four, uh, Silver Surfer is white. He's white. <laughs> it's not silver so much as he is white gold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we call it rose gold. <laughs> uh, one character that did not hit the threshold, and I could have told you that as the minute he was drafted, uh, John Henry Irons was drafted by the Jewish delegation uh, if he was John Henry Silver, maybe, but you know, not, not. Sixty-three percent approval rating for Jewish Steel, and mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's how the ball, that's how the the ball bounces sometimes. And that brings us to the final pick of the round of the supplemental round, and that is Raz Agul. Despite all the Liam Neesons, despite whomever else, North African, Razagul, Swana Mena delegation. Yep. I like and if, that. And, if, right. and it, you know, I know that there's some controversy because, uh, you know, in, in some of his early stories, he may have roots in East Asia and then spent a lot of time in North Africa where he established his name and his, um, his ties to Islam and you know, all that iconography. But I think it's just cleaner if he's just North African right off the, right off the rip. I mean, to be fair, they, they wanted to like slip in all of the, the scary Asian. Yes, they wanted, they wanted all <laughs> of the Orientalism. They, they wanted like, all of yeah. that. That's all exactly what it is. They were like, wait, is there any way that we can make them like martial arts and mummy? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is what I refer to as the Agrabah problem. Like, yeah. where is he from? Oh, it, it could be China. It could be India. It could be Tunisia. Like, those are completely different places on Earth, guys. You understand? He's like, he's like, which of those do you find scarier? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Depending on where we are in terms of our phobias, you know, which, which, which to be like, you know, to 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 give props. That is exactly what they were saying in Iron Man Three. Yes, that's what yes. they were saying. Was like, he's all of the scary things. Aren't you scared of how? many scaries he is like and, and <laughs> that's Tony what made Stark him so brilliant yes yeah. that's what makes that's what makes it brilliant yes so you heard it here first the mandarin is raz al ghul um <laughs> i mean kind of <laughs> but taken back by the swanamena delegation if you're gonna if you're gonna demonize if you're gonna demonize a people demonize this one people <laughs> I mean, if, if he is to, the he is the head of the demon, is is he not? If, <laughs> if you're not, if you're going to demonize somebody, it might as well be the head of the demon. Yeah, right. Exactly. So yes, so they got Razagul and they family changed 
Nissa Agu Algu. They also got little known grandchild Mara Algu. There was apparently a son that died somewhere along the line who was not family changed, probably just because he he dead. He dead. <laughs> <laughs> you should also um, family chain the mother. Um well Nis well uh, Talia Algu was 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 drafted, was was already drafted. Not Talia. Um, her name is like Rush Algu, something like that. She's been, yeah, Mother she's Soul. been in the Robin series. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. But but what seeing as how that didn't happen, guess what? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> it's too late now. Yeah, mm-hmm. got it. I guess they're going to have to use their pick. <laughs> their, their, their first pick around mine. Yeah, the next pick. <laughs> this is the, the Al Ghul delegation. <laughs> Yeah, I mean but, that, um, that makes sense because because Rachel Ghoul is those are Arabic words. Like yes. It's never made sense to me. Like when in, in the um Batman begins when they're like the red herring was it was Ken Watanabe, it was like no, like this still doesn't make sense. <laughs> this still doesn't make sense. No, you're right. It's never it doesn't. They're just like, uh, oh, do we have to <laughs> cast a a person from that part of the world? Uh, Where's where's the rock when you need him? <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, um I think let me make sure I didn't miss out on any. Oh, we got some more family chainings right under the wire uh from the white delegation doing their thing. Um the white delegation, they were able to bring in Rip Hunter as the uh, father, right, of Booster Gold. Mm-hmm. I can, it's timey wimey. Um, and Booster Gold apparently has a twin sister named Michelle Carter, aka Gold Star. Um, and you know, if there's anything, is there anything more white than my brother broke all types of laws to get superpowers? So I obviously do the same thing because nepotism. Um, right. so. So yeah, I mean it tracks. It tracks. I know. I know you don't fully approve, Randy, but you know, in in your heart of hearts, you gotta think Booster Gold is he's he's running running full tank of Caucasity. I I gave I gave the 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 pick. I I liked the tweet, and then, <laughs> and then I voted my conscience. That's what happened. <laughs> And Booster Gold's sister, Ivanka Gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, so, Sean, I mean, I, I should have been leaning on you more for FCL analysis, but you know, this is the supplemental draft where like the FCL scores aren't really, um, you know, that that relevant. But like, you know, just kind of overall, as someone who's been, you know, helping us with the the FCL scoring. What are some of the characters that 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 you think were some of the best values uh, by the various delegations this week? Just in general. Just in general. I mean, okay. let me let me pull up my 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 DC stats. I got them right here. I'm gonna because like I don't want to say Batman because I don't think he's. I still don't think he's worth 1,100 points. So. <laughs> well, like. I'm gonna say like some of the 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 high the people who are killing it this year who I wouldn't expect to be killing it like Wally West Wally West is destroying right now. Uh, Still is Aquaman Arthur Curry you know um, Aquaman Nubia Nubia is a great pick this year she's kicking Harley Quinn's ass. That's yeah, pretty that's, good. those are those are three for three for the black delegation right there. Uh-huh. Wow. Yep. I talk a lot of shit about you, Randy, but Randy, you're killing it this year. Killing it. <laughs> Finally. Uh, and then, like, does anybody have Ghostmaker right now? Yeah, Ghostmaker is the uh, East Southeast Asian delegation. What a great character. He just does so much shit. I love him. Yeah, he's head of Batman Inc. now, right? Yeah, um, so he's getting the book. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand why Talia was drafted and not Raish because Talia is doing really good this year. Um, Raish is dead, but I guess. I think he died during the scoring season, so you at least get a character development. Oh no, but he was just drafted. He was drafted. He, you know, supplemental is no FCL points anyway. Oh no, FCL points at all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why he was. That's why he was just sitting there on the board, versus Talia, who is 
alive and kicking. <laughs> well, I think I think all the big ones, Randy got. Like I'm looking at it, I'm like, nobody else is doing surprisingly well. Cassandra Kane. Somebody got fucking Cassandra Kane yet? Because if not, yeah, Cass- man, yeah Cassandra good. Kane's also East Southeast Asian delegation. Uh-huh. Good. Because like yep. she's still uh does anybody have Stephanie Brown? Yep. Uh Stephanie Jewish Brown delegation. is the Jewish. No, drafted by the Jewish, but traded to the oh, multiracial oh. delegation. Okay, okay. Okay, because she keeps slipping in and out of the top 10, and she's actually doing better than Cassandra. So that's crazy. Like the back girls, the back girls should have been like at the front of everybody's list. Like you go Batman, you go Robins, you go back girls, and then yeah. we look at yeah. other characters. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they were drafted fairly high, I think. Um I remember coming on at one point, Cassandra Kane had not been drafted, and I think the season was about to be over. And I was like, this is insanity. I do feel like Cassandra Kane went relatively late. Yeah. Cassandra Kane and Stephanie Brown kind of went close to each other, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe. I mean, I think the part of the problem was that other than Toriano, there weren't really a lot of people that were going to try to square that circle. Of. Right. Uh, <laughs> hello, Gordy. Make your move. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, so, so Cassandra Kane was the eighty second. Was the eighty second character chosen? So that puts her in round nine. Um, I mean, like, I I personally like was not really aware of her presence. I don't read a whole lot of Bat books. I was reading Bat Girls, and I think that was like it. But even so, again, that. I couldn't have even come up with a backstory that made that one work. Stephanie, and Stephanie Brown. Brown was 58, was was picked 58. So that was sixth round. Stephanie Brown went before Barbara Gordon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, one pick, like, but one pick, one pick before Gar- Barbara mm-hmm. Gordon. It was around the same time, basically. So top three appearances at DC are Batman at 84, Dick at 47, and then Barbara at 42. Batman and Dick are number one and number two. Barbara Gordon is sitting at 10th. Oof. Barbara Gordon does not But that's because a like, lot I give of her, her as much points as I can. I mean, a lot of her appearances are as Oracle, though, where she's just kind of, you know, running point on the computers. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, she's not out there accumulating points like, you know, if she's in the in the fight but still a good character she's still got a movie coming yeah. next year next year this year can't remember i won't buy it till i <laughs> see it now because now now there's it depends on another movie coming out mm, does it though because that I movie mean, that movie might never come out I, you know what i i was thinking about it <laughs> you just referred to it only as flash it's the gritty reboot of, <laughs> it's the rated R Joker uh, version of that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, if, but, one theme, if there isn't one scene where he flashes somebody, I mean. Oh, oh no. <laughs> on, on top of everything else, do we really want to add that on top of everything else? He just runs really fast to choke random people. <laughs> <laughs> Because their Parcheesi board was not to his liking or whatever. And then he goes and he hides in the Speed Force because remember, we can never find him. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, man. The, you laugh to keep from crying. Seriously, seriously. <laughs> it's, like, just, it's so funny. I, I mean, at this, at this point, do we even need a Flash movie? Can we just... Can we just Let's just pretend that the movie came out. Just have have like all the things happen, and then have the characters just refer to, oh yeah, you know, like what happened with the Flash. And if they were just kind of know, you know, if they were smart about it, um, they would make Peacemaker season two something that rewrites the timeline. Here's the thing: we're gonna get the Flash movie though, because no matter what, it was never the Flash movie. It's gonna be a Batman movie, right? No, but it's if it was a Batman movie, they would have already put it out. It's about Batman. He's no, they're gonna what I'm it saying is, if it was a Batman, if it movie. was really a Batman movie, they would have put it out already and cut out all the Flash parts of it. It's still enough of a Flash movie that they can't cut the Flash out of it. It's it's I mean, three versions of the Flash at yeah. least in this movie, like, and on, Supergirl. Am am I am I like 
Am I tripping to just say release it on HBO Max? I mean, they had plans for for uh, Blue Beetle and Batgirl and them to be like on the back burner yeah. on HBO Max. Yeah, but they didn't spend two hundred fifty million dollars on those movies, and David Zaslav yeah, like but, but does much, not. How much of that are they expecting to get back though? Any any amount is more than they would get if they put it on HBO Max. Hmm. Yeah, like I, I, I listen. I honestly think that that their strategy, and it's not the it's not the dumbest strategy. Their strategy is if they can they can put it on HBO Max at any time, uh-huh. you know. Like so, they might as well wait for you know the sliver of time that Ezra's not in the headlines, like some some like thirty day window where uh, Ezra hasn't tried to kill somebody. 15 and, days ago. Okay. And, and put it in the theaters. And then immediately, as soon as Ezra resurfaces, all right, well, now, now it's on HBO Max. <laughs> I mean, in a flash. I, it's, in a flash. Like, it's, it's like a flash mob is what it is. <laughs> and, and honestly, like we're talking about it, but what's so sad about it is I feel like they're counting on the public, not, like kind of not really putting their money where their mouth is and not really caring as much about the horribleness of it all and still yeah, but, the, like, but well, it's a it's a superhero thing so yeah know, but I, that's what i'm saying i think that i think that when the when the trailer like they'll they'll, they'll have a trailer right yeah like it's gonna be a trailer that doesn't have the flash in it <laughs> it's gonna, you know it's gonna be a trailer that's just gonna it's gonna have a lightning bolt that'll be fine you know it's gonna have like what we associate with the flash but then it's going to have a whole lot of all the other characters that are in this movie. And then, like I said, they're just going to find themselves a window where, you know, it's been X days since incident. And then they'll like rush it into the theaters, try to get as much money as they can, because, you know, weirdly, I mean, we're, we're in the bubble, right? We are nerds that follow this stuff and we follow entertainment news. And we like, we, we don't have Google alerts for Ezra Miller, but we may as well, you know, like, like something happened. Lord knows and, our, our, our group chats have certainly <laughs> seemed that way at times. Yeah, exactly. But the average person, you know, they're they'll be moving on to the next thing. Right. And yeah. and you know, if a movie comes out, they'll be like, Yeah, didn't that wasn't there somebody with like controversy? I don't know, whatever. It's the flash and it's Batman and it's Supergirl and it's whatever, and they'll watch it and and they'll make maybe they'll make the money back. Maybe you know, especially worldwide. And you know. And- Honestly, like, I mean, I'm kind of, you know, joking around about this stuff a, a bit, but it's, it's sort of like, I I kind of, you know, was surprised that Morbius didn't end up making more despite being awful. And like, you know, because people just kind of, you know, whatever their own curiosity is and mm-hmm. don't really care about particularly the scandal. And, and so if flash ends up you know for the few people who do actually go see flash you know whoever goes to see flash and then their word of mouth still ends up being positive because the movie well yeah that's the other thing like apparently according to the test screenings the movie's good right exactly so that might you know yeah so now you're just dealing with people like drawing a moral line yeah like and being like i'm not going to see this good movie because i have an objection to you know an actor like, yeah, but couldn't they just like be like, listen, we race band Supergirl. Don't you want to support that? They could do that. I mean, and I then they're know. like, oh, let's put the cultures against uh, each other. Arguments will be made. And I feel like it 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 really sucks that we even have to have this conversation, but arguments will definitely be made. They're like, okay, well, fine. We're going to try to give it a try and, you know, whatever. And because everybody wants to have kind of their little moral high ground or have their own little soapbox and stuff, but they also want to see the cape fun. Like, <laughs> yes. want that part too. Yeah, so, I mean, they just, just don't uh, want to feel icky when they do it. Right. And, yeah. and, that's, and, and that's the, I think that's the tightrope that one, Warner Brothers wants to walk. Like they want to find that, listen, I follow the NFL. So like, I, I already know how this game is played. You know, they're like, mm, people care. And then uh, their teams in the playoffs and now they don't care. Like, you know, yeah. like this is this is how how they play this play the game. And I think that's and, and, if, and if they and if it backfires, if it gets up to the release date and, you know, within that month, 
uh, Ezra is, you know, leading a uh, 12 in a 12 state manhunt or whatever hunt. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like then they'll be like, well, I guess, I guess our hands are tied. You know, I guess we will have to come up with plan plan F. I mean, you know, Army, <laughs> Army Hammer was was discovered at least <laughs> contemplating cannibalism. <laughs> his movie still came out so and he was still in said movie right right exactly. <laughs> and he was not the star of the movie not not edited <laughs> out not yeah so uh, i mean gosh. but you know i mean it sucks because this is about bigger things than right this is more important honestly than than a movie exactly. um, you know like it's like it theoretically like lives are in danger people have been hurt people will uh-huh. potentially be hurt uh, in the future, and you know, we would we would like for action to be taken to uh, help the people who are in need and prevent people from being harmed that will that are endangered. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, this does touch on our like nerd space, and it leads us to have to speculate on what a billion dollar property is gonna you know how they're gonna proceed. Um, I wish that we could separate the two and not, but. This is just the world we're in. This it's is- just, you know, and, and you put up a picture the other day that showed, or maybe it was a retweet um, of Blue Beetle, Supergirl, and Batgirl, mm-hmm. all of whom will be Latinx, like yep. eventually. And I was like, I'm so psyched for this, except that two of them are dependent on a movie that may never be released. So, like, we're, right. you know, we're, we have to get. We have to get this movie out to get to that point. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how you do it because you're going to have to push this movie. If the movie's coming out, there's going to be press for this movie. And you know that it'll never be um, like the star of the film will not be pushing the movie. And so the co stars will, and they won't be able to talk about the star of the film but they're going to be asked about it. Like it's going to get awkward. Like it's going to be a very awful situation. Right. The questions are never going to go away. Right. (laughs) They got to get that Andrew Garfield money where he got paid to lie for a year. (laughs) There is no movie coming out. Wait, that's too far of a lie. Wait, hold on. (laughs) Yeah. They need to, whoever, whoever Tom Cruise's PR person is, um, you know, Tom Cruise was able to go all around the world and never get asked about Scientology. Like, yeah. you know, like that, that's the gold standard for, <laughs> for a press tour. Um, I mean, the bottom line is you want to talk to Tom Cruise again. You want that fair. access. So you'll, you'll, but fair. it's like, it's like, oh no, the woman who's playing Supergirl, who I've never heard of before, may never talk to us again. Guys, I just figured it out. I just solved this. I just solved this. You know, you know what they need to do? We're thinking that they need to do reshoots to take Ezra out of the movie. But what they really need to do is they need to do reshoots to put Deadshot into the movie. So then Will Smith can be on the press tours and they could ask Will Smith about about Chris Rock. Slapping Chris Rock throughout. Brilliant. Mystery uh, solved. Mystery solved. That's what cancel culture is, right? When two <laughs> things cancel each other out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, just, I like the idea of like getting to the end of the Flash, and like it's a totally happy ending, and then like Ezra's head explodes, and like Waller comes out, and it was like, it's, yeah, he was on the Suicide Squad the whole time. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, mean, I thought she, you were gonna say. No, I thought you were gonna say it was Deadshot from the sniper yeah. rifle. Like, yeah, you know, and, like, and everyone like, uh, like everyone cheers. Deadshot, he's like, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Waller, then, come, Waller comes out and is like, he was on the suicide squad the whole time, and then just like everyone just kind of looks at her like, wait, what? And she goes, yeah, roll the credits, and then the credits just roll, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> and they all do the dance from Peacemaker for no reason. <laughs> 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 or only Waller does the dance from <laughs> That would be even better. That would be amazing. Do you really want it? Do you really want it? Oh my god. Or maybe he had you know, maybe maybe Barry had the, the little moth thing in his in his brain. Yes. You know? Yep. 
you get some like natural like uh practical effects to like so you don't actually have to pay Ezra to come back and do reshoots. <laughs> you get some practical effects of like a dummy head exploding or whatever. Oh man, I'm in. Let's we're in, this. we're back in. We are if back they, in. If they <laughs> promise a gruesome death for Ezra Miller's flash, <laughs> I think I think it solves all of it. Like, yes. Look, I still listen, I, I'm still tied to my dead shot idea. You get Will Smith on that press tour. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, you it's, you're killing multiple birds with one stone, really. You know. It's like, oh, oh, you want you want to ask me about slapping somebody? <laughs> me? <laughs> about committing violence? <laughs> I think we did it, guys. We did it. We, we you're welcome, WD. You're welcome. <laughs> Once again, we've solved it all. And uh, yeah, that's probably where we should leave it, guys. <laughs> We're not going to get better than that. So if you're a fan of what we just did here, uh, you're as depraved as we are. And we would love to have you uh, join us from week to week. We do this every week. We change the complexion of the comic book universe, and then we make wildly inappropriate jokes about it. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, find us on social media. Find us on Racial Draft Pod on Twitter find this podcast you'll be listening to it but you can find it on all your podcast platforms you can find us on youtube you can find us on facebook you can find us on instagram you can find me at mtfii on twitter carlos where can they find you on twitter i'm at carlos freitas jr on twitter randy where can they find you on twitter you can find me and all of my loving support for the Polynesian people at Randy S0725 on Twitter. And I also use the hashtag superpower list. And Sean is smart enough to not be on Twitter. Uh, our hats <laughs> our hats go off to you uh, for staying away from that kind of cesspool. Um, but, but you can listeners... find my grandpa at, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but they can also find your uh, work with the Fantasy Comics League. Tell them, tell the people if they're listening for the first time about the Fantasy Comics League. The Vanica Fantasy Comics League is a point-based system that we use to score characters in the weekly comics that Marvel and DC put out. Uh, Fantasy Comic League is on Twitter. You can find them at, at Fantasy Comic LG. And then we also have the FantasyComicLeague.com where we put up weekly update articles, scoring the points and breaking down the books. Yes, and I'm sure that in the coming years, if not this year, you guys will eventually do Infinity Comics and Web Comics and- uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm just a lowly second person, (laughs) creator, but second in equal in power, but not really. (laughs) Uh, You know, those Web Comics, man, they're, they're, they're just blowing up. Webtoons. LDC to do it again and I'll, I'll score them. Oh, the webtoons. I haven't even looked at those. They're, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're good. They're good. Yeah. I'm starting to advertise like I was at, I was on the subway the other day and there was like every ad on the walls, mm-hmm. not even in the trains, on the walls was just for webtoons. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. the DC webtoons deal is, uh, you know, I think that they, they had a, a uh, Vixen book that launched a little while back. They've got a... a um, What's what's it? The Zatanna they, they book. Have, they have uh, Batman, Wayne Family Adventures. They have, of course, uh, of course, Batman. Zatanna. <laughs> um, I think Red Hood is get, you know Red Hood and the out, uh, Outlaws mm-hmm. is getting one. And, wait, wait, um, like did they bring Scott Lobdell? I, I have no idea the creative team, but I, I do believe that there might be some others like in the works beside those. Yeah. What is Webtoons then? It, it's just a web comic site, and then they have mm-hmm. like team that just like puts out a weekly um like long you know long form that you kind of gotta like scroll down and like see yeah it's the same kinda format like the, as the, the spider-man comics. weekly strip comic right kind of like that yeah. it's kind of like you know the inf- have you what have you read any of the infinity comics on marvel yeah it's this yeah, it's basically yeah. the infinity comics except mm-hmm. on in dc on like website format instead of um in an app okay. Check this out. And actually, they have an app. I can't believe I didn't even hear about this. How did yeah. I not hear about this? I dude, literally I mean, scored DC Comics all fucking week. Dude, dude, the yeah, they uh, they had a deal. Well, I think for they've had a deal for about a year with uh with with DC. Do do the thing because they are like super quick to catch up with. Like even if you miss like five weeks of them or whatever, you take like thirty minutes out of your day to try to catch up with those. They're they're super quick. 
and it's cool. and it's a weekly comic so that means like you could definitely have some games based around the weekly comic you know yeah but yeah so more more work <laughs> but potentially more potentially more uh patreon people who might want to do a webcom a webtoons league you know just saying but that is uh that was our fantasy comic league minute where we tried to create more work for sean but oh, we are not trying to create more work for you uh have a happy holiday weekend for those of you who believe in freedom um and also believe in fireworks um also find us next week same race time same race channel i don't know <laughs> Same black time, same <laughs> black <laughs> channel. Uh, but until next time, folks, all things are possible. <laughs>